right, Buenos Dias, user dash WK9ZKARH5P says, Unfortunately, you do not have a grasp of the Bible. You clearly do not recognize fulfilled prophecies and future promises from God. You clearly misrepresent Chuck Missler by picking and choosing out of context. Missler's audience are predominantly Bible readers. Why should anyone trust you? If you follow the context of Missler's presentation, it is consistent, cogent, and all of it is supported by the scriptures, God's word. I mislead people. I mislead people. Okay. <laughs> ah, that's fantastic. You know, you, you write a book here. You, you put up one scripture here. But I don't think you even... You didn't even take the time to... I mean, to me... Look, let's let's go to it. Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. To me, this here, what I just read, is more valuable than what's highlighted here, okay? Because without what I quoted, this means nothing. All right, the Bible is the perfect word of God. All right, so, um... You know, restudy my. He says one. I suggest that you restudy your King James Bible. It's not a version. It's the Bible. All right. So <clears throat> let me quickly explain this. I I read the Bible every day. I study the Bible every day. And what restudy it? I mean, what that means? Because I'm reading and studying every single day so it's not like oh I studied it and I'm done I don't need to study it no more I mean that's that concept is not even doesn't it's not even it doesn't compute in my head okay restudy it uh, I mean come on man all right first of all Let's back up. Now, the audience that I am uh, aiming my presentations toward are those people that are very well studied. All right. There is a word in here. When I read this the first time, let's see if I can find it. your presentation displays a lack of scholarship okay <clears throat> I doubt that most of your listeners are Bible scholars themselves alright so I my um, presentation is aimed at Bible scholars and I consider anybody that reads the Bible and believes it is from God is a Bible scholar. That's it. All right. Now my hope is that I'm able to teach very simply, very in a very easy to understand way. 
okay? That's my goal, to teach in a very simplified, easy way so that somebody might see the very obvious and understand the scripture. I want to show you one verse here. In Psalm 19, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Alright, so the Bible, the Word of God, is able to make the most simple-minded people wise. And all that's required is faith. You don't have to go to school. In fact, I would contend if you go to school, a seminary or whatever, it's going to retard your growth because there's going to be so much misinformation given to you that it's going to slow you down. The easiest way to grow is to simply read the Bible and believe that it is from God because it is. Oh, come on. First John chapter 2 And ye need not that any man teach you. You don't need a man to teach you what God is saying. Alright? <laughs> so, this idea that you have to go to college, you have to have a, a placard on your wall, that's stupid. That don't mean nothing. The only requirement is to believe. The only requirement. Uh, even to this day, it, if you go to college and do all this sort of stuff and you go to seminaries and you read the Bible from cover to cover, it don't mean nothing. And you sit around and talk about it for three hours a day, don't mean nothing if you don't believe it. And that's the world that we're in right now. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Now this is supported by numerous other scripture. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, when it shall believe in Jesus Christ, the veil shall be taken away. Alright, so now when the veil is taken away, that's, you know, when you believe, then comes understanding all right all right so um, this idea of scholarship I know what you're talking about displays a lack of scholarship that's just brilliant you look at all of this that you wrote And I don't see any direct uh, quoting of the scripture. Not a single piece. So let me quote some scripture for you, okay? You clearly do not recognize fulfilled prophecy and future promises from God. Now that's a vague statement, but I know what you're talking about. Alright, because it's the same thing that our friend down here, I think it was Ryan... No? Yeah, down here, same thing. Alright, so he claims Jesus is a Jew. Well, okay. Uh, we'll consider this. Um, was his dad a Jew?
you know Jesus had no earthly father right so he was born of the flesh and born of the spirit and so also in John chapter 3 Jesus says verily I say unto you unless a man is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of spirit he cannot see cannot enter into the kingdom of God All right so we must be born of the water which is being born from our mother's womb I heard some idiot the other day try to claim I watched being water baptized that's not that's not even uh, taken that's somebody that doesn't care about the truth at all and you can I mean you I don't know how you could be that ignorant you have to be willingly stupid you have to really try to really hard to be stupid to think that this is talking about water baptism that's being born of the mother's womb and we see this here in verse 4 Nicodemus says how can a man be born when he's old can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born and then the context is except a man be born of water in other words born from a mother's womb and of the spirit he cannot enter in, into the kingdom of God now if that's not enough keep reading that which is born of the flesh is flesh so we got mother's womb we got be, being born of water and we got flesh right? <laughs> I mean, if you've never read this, maybe I can understand how you can get that wrong. Otherwise, you're just being stupid on purpose. Deceitful. Alright. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay. So, without being born of the Spirit, you cannot understand the Word of God. Can't. It's not possible. Cannot understand the Word of God. Okay. So, I forgot what I was talking about here. Also, Jesus also being born of the flesh was also born of the spirit was Jesus a Jew well Jesus is God Almighty Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. Alright, so God came into this flesh that we live in. And He has led the way. He laid down His life for us and He took it back up and ascended to heaven. Now He is the way. Right. He has led the way for us. God has came into the flesh and led the way and shown us the way. And He is the way. Alright, so this idea uh, of Jesus being a Jew, that's I think, completely ignorant of, of the message of God. And here it says, even when all nations come against Israel, Christians should still support them. Why? It doesn't make any sense. You're talking about 19, 
48 Israel I, <laughs> that's not it's not biblical at all and we Christians are the children of Israel all right now if you don't know the Bible I mean here you've been studying and watching and listening and all this stuff uh, about what you know what Ch Chuck Missler says and you, you don't understand then he's doing it wrong and he's wrong and he's a false teacher and he's misleading so many people so alright so me I want to teach you a very easy way to see this alright so the promises to Abraham was to his seed all right now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made he saith not and to seeds as of many but as of one and to thy seed which is Christ so the promise was not through the flesh not to seeds but to the, thy seed which is Christ um, let me go back up here and to thy seed which is Christ he saith not into seeds as of many but as of one and to thy seed which is Christ and if you be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise all right <laughs> there is neither Jew nor Greek see that goes to what to counter what this I don't know what Ryan was saying or whatever I mean look we are the children of Israel we that are born of God are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus by faith there is no other way there is no other way now let's work backwards this time okay let's go to Let's go. Oh, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Let's see what happens here. In Matthew 21, Jesus says, Therefore I say unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. He's talking about the kingdom of God is now going to be available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, in the Old Testament, it was one group, one nation of God. Now that nation is spread abroad. All right, so now it's available. The kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes. So now the nation of God are the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the transformation. That's the big deal. Uh, that's the change that occurred when Jesus was on the earth. Okay, and when he um, did his works okay that's the change when he brings in the New Testament this is the new world that we're in that is much different than the world before he was born of the flesh okay much different okay so therefore I say unto you the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof now we read in uh, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, somewhere in the Bible, 1 Peter chapter 2, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation of peculiar people. Right? He's talking about those, those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy 
All right, we are, we Christians are that holy nation. All right, let's go to the Old Testament, Exodus 19, starting at verse 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure. See, notice the comparison there? A peculiar people. All right, see the similarity there? Shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priest notice the similarity here a royal priesthood right and holy nation see the similarity there and holy nation so we got royal priesthood holy nation peculiar people all similarities these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel uh, we are the children of Israel. We are the children of God. And he saith not seeds as of many, but seed as in one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And again, if that's not enough here. Oops. Remember what it said in Revelation chapter 1? And he has made us kings and priests unto God. We are royalty unto God. Right? Alright, so <laughs> that's simple. That's simple stuff, man. And here Chuck, he can never figure it out. All those years, all those, all that money that he made, all those speeches that he gave, could never figure it out. And you're saying, I mislead people? Think about what Chuck is saying. Chuck is saying people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ are heirs according to the promise. So it's better to reject Jesus Christ and be heirs according to the promise of God than it is to be believers in Jesus Christ. I, and you guys don't even think, do you? You guys don't even use your brain at all. You have to be willingly stupid. Willingly stupid on purpose to believe that this 1948 Israel is somehow related to scripture and <laughs> we're going to go study the Bible and I don't think you know what's, what good does it do you to study the Bible if you don't believe it really and Isaiah 66, who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. All right, so again, I go back. <laughs> Let's do it this way. do it another way here let's try another way let's try this way oh what happened oh my goodness sake. let's try it this way this might be an interesting way to do it. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, 
bringing forth the fruits there. Uh, now you can't make the comparison. You can't connect the dots. Then there's something wrong with your faith. So you think this nation of God or this nation that was brought forth in a day you think that was a nation that built and designed to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. You think that Isaiah 66 is prophesying that a nation shall be born, a nation that rejects the Lord Jesus Christ. You think that's what this is talking about? I just be honest, man. I think about what you're, uh, what you're preaching. Uh, look, I get it. You don't think about what you believe. You just a brain dead idiot who just repeats what somebody said okay and that's how you've been programmed since you were a kid and we all are we're programmed to be brain dead idiots and to not think about what we're parroting so I get it I went through it Every, we all went through it But I'm here to say, look, think about what it is that you're teaching. Think about what it is that you're parroting. Again, ask yourself, is this referring to a nation that rejects the Lord Jesus Christ? All right. This Consider it. I mean, for crying out loud. The truth matters. Alright, 1 Corinthians 15. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So, again, are you saying that Isaiah 66 is about a nation of people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ and that they are the nation of God because of they got dark hair and a big nose I mean just be honest think about what it is that you believe does the truth matter I contend it strongly that it matters all right remember what we read in John chapter 3 that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit so we're all born of the flesh but we're not all born of the spirit that is from above, okay? All right, so yeah, all this nonsense, uh, amillennialism, Catholicism, or most Reformation churches, uh, permanent Catholic church, and all these big fancy words that I can't even say. It don't mean a thing. Alright, they don't mean a thing at all. You don't need to know these big fancy words. Unless they're in the Bible, you really don't need to know them at all. Alright, I can get into that too. <laughs> I mean, come on man. Come on user WK9ZK8RH5P, come on. <laughs> 